The Minnesota Twins made one of the biggest blockbuster trades of the deadline on Friday, but where does that put this organization? How did I feel about these deals? How do I see the team going forward? Let's get into this. This is Tom Froming from Twins Daily. I'm going to start out at the good stuff, at, at the positive reactions I have. We're going to still be sort of a choose your own adventure. <laughs> and if you want to leave it at that, I don't blame you. It's been a rough, rough past few months of baseball. Uh, Twins fans have been beaten up and had to take a lot of losses. If you just want to end the day taking the W and feeling good about the talent that's been brought into this organization, I get it. For everybody else, I'm going to get into some things that I'm not real satisfied with about this deadline and about this organization right now in general. So here we are at Twins Daily. If, if you missed it, Jose Barrios got traded to the Blue Jays in exchange for Austin Martin and Simeon Woods Richardson. These are, you know, in prospect terms, two pretty, uh, pretty well-known prospects. Uh, you have a guy who was a top five pick in the 2020 draft, so not too long ago, who was on a very high-profile college team. Uh, and then you have another guy who was in a, a former second-round pick who was in a very high-profile trade that sent Marcus Stroman to the Mets from the Blue Jays. So two guys that sort of the general baseball, plugged in baseball community has an idea of, which is not, that's pretty unusual for prospects. So I think that definitely adds some sort of name brand value to this trade for a lot of people. Um, it's not just two random names that nobody really knows about. And um, these are guys who have, you know, been high up on prospect lists, um, you know, top 100 lists, all that stuff. So uh, very much uh, two of the most recognizable, I think, uh, prospects in baseball coming from the Blue Jays. And, you know, I was a person who wasn't really set, I would say, put it that way, on trading Jose Brios. If, if Jose Brios was a twin right now, it really wouldn't have bothered me at all. Um, I didn't think that they had to trade him, but I was saying everybody has a price. And the kind of uh, the two things that I would have wanted out of this deal um, were getting some pitching and targeting guys who are close to the major leagues. They got a pitcher. They got two guys who are in double A, which is pretty dang close to the major league. So you know what? Is this a deal I would have done? Probably. And again, I was somebody who was really not wanting to let go of Jose Barrios. Uh, but, you know, that is a price that is really hard to put the phone down when that's out there. So I uh, definitely think the Twins got a good return. I think much like the Nelson Cruz trade, I think they – they really uh, were fortunate to match up with a team that um, kind of was in a situation where they had these guys to lose. I think this is a good trade for the Blue Jays, too. Uh, you get a year and a half of Jose Brios. You're trying to compete in that always tough AL East. Um, and you have such a good young crop of position players already. Um, so to, to give up Martin um, doesn't hurt the Blue Jays as much as it might another – franchise you know they just made a big investment in george springer too for a long term so their 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 everyday lineup is pretty set and then uh, woods richardson you know he, he was a, a nice pitching prospect somebody i'm sure they had high hopes for they targeted him in the stroman trade but you're you know you're bringing in brios for a year and a half so that sort of takes away the sting um on losing him so i think this was a really again just like the cruise of tampa where tampa had lots of pitchers uh, that they, they could afford to give up because they have so much pitching uh, really worked out well as a win-win for both teams to where you could make the argument that Tampa overpaid for Nelson Cruz and that Toronto overpaid for Barrios. But again, these were pieces that felt like they were in surplus to those organizations. I'm going to put out some highlight videos of these guys. So if you haven't checked out the channel, if you please consider subscribing. I'll have some actual highlights of both these prospects coming very soon. Uh, but who is Austin Martin? Again, the number five overall pick in last year's drafts. He hasn't been a professional for too long. And, you know, up here we have the prospect rankings. He was basically a borderline top 20 prospect in all of baseball heading into this year. And in his very first year of pro ball, this is a very aggressive assignment. Toronto sent him straight to double A. Um, and apparently I've heard as well that he's been dealing with a hand injury. Um, so consider that when looking at his numbers, but a 424 on base percentage, just an on base machine. The slugging is not there. And that's sort of the concern is where is the power? Why is this guy not hitting for power? Um, he did show some power in college. So, you know, 600 slugging percentage, both his last two years at Vanderbilt, of course, the 2020 season cut a bit short. Um, so it's there. You have to kind of hope that, you know, that's a combination of him facing more polished 
pitchers, you know, um, the SEC is a great, that's the best conference in college baseball. So it's not like he was facing a bunch of slouches in college, but double A guys, these guys are, are borderline major league uh, caliber pitchers. Very difficult to combine that with, you know, getting adjusted to minor league lifestyle. This is totally different too. Um, you know, we see here in 2019 when there was a full season um, of baseball in college, he only played 65 games. So there, there, there are all these adjustments going on. You throw a hand injury on top of that, and maybe this guy is, you know, much better than these numbers indicate. I would certainly uh, uh, be able to buy into that. Some of the same things can be said about Woods Richardson as well. So again, here, Simeon Woods Richardson, the thing to point out here, 20 years old, only 20 years old still is Simeon Woods Richardson. And he is in double A. To me, that's very aggressive as well. Because, you know, this goes to the guy drafted out of high school. So he has more of that uh, track record in the minor leagues. Uh, but still, to be 20 years old and in double A, you can see here, he is 4.8 years younger than the average competition in double A. But Woods Richardson also kind of showing some struggles. His ERA is not great. You see there 5.76. The whip is one and a half. He's walking 5.2 guys per nine, uh, though averaging 13.3 strikeouts. So that's good to see. Uh, still showing he's got some overpowering stuff in double A. Again, I think. Uh, him being only 20 years old, that's a tough assignment. It's pretty aggressive. I mean, uh, before New York got their hands, or excuse me, Toronto got their hands on him, New York was pretty aggressive with him as well. Uh, but 20 years old, plenty of time to develop still. But this is sort of where that comes into play, that maybe these guys, the name value of these guys is a little higher than their actual prospect stock right now. As you can see here with Woods Richardson, this is a guy who, you know, Baseball America in particular, had him as a top 70 prospect the past two years. But here's a really good insight from J.J. Cooper of Baseball America. I've really appreciated on this trade that he he sort of points out that looking at preseason rankings, especially I think in 2021 where we're coming off a lost season, isn't all that valuable. Um, there are, you know, Austin Martin, a good prospect but with legit questions. You know, Simeon Woods Richardson you know, has some struggle with the control. You know, that's certainly a concern. He, he does point out that the Twins – Maybe doing a good job of getting two guys who may not have been available last offseason, but both of these Blue Jays prospects have more concerns now than they did coming into the season. So take that for what it's worth. Um, you might you might say, wait, is this is this the bad part? Did we already position into the part where you're going negative? No, 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 no. Um, I actually kind of uh, like targeting guys who are maybe performing the way under the way you feel their skill level is. I actually like that as a strategy quite a bit. Um, and I feel like that, that does accurately depict both of these guys. I think Austin Martin and Simeon Woods Richardson are better than these numbers and indi would indicate, I would think most scouts would be very much behind that notion. Uh, but you know, that still means that if we were to look at a updated 100 uh, top prospects list today, those guys are going to be shifted down because, you know, when you're talking about a guy who's a borderline top 20, those are some really good players that he's competing with. And so there were guys that were probably close to Austin Martin already who are having great seasons that are going to leapfrog him on some of the midseason lists. That doesn't mean that that this haul isn't impressive for Jose Barrios. Again, as much as I would have loved to keep Jose Barrios, I would have done this trade. Along the same lines, Keith Law, who also really liked this trade for the Twins, did point out uh, basically for a year and a half, Brios, that sounds about right, even if these two prospects are more famous than their skills merit right now. So he's saying that Austin Martin and Mar uh, Simeon's Woods Richardson have more of that name value, more of that name brand sort of prospect value. <laughs> there are names that people know that are probably not as you know sexy of prospects as people have in their minds due to that, but still as even Keith Law, who's very tough, says that this feels about right uh, for a season and a half of Brios. Let's get into some of the other deals here real quick. The Twins also surprisingly found a taker for Jay Happ. I mean, you know, this is the only deadline now. Yeah, in years past, there are usually through August, you could do waiver moves that would kind of help you pick up some of the scraps, basically some depth pieces if you need them. No longer a thing, so I'm not too shocked that Jay Happ got traded. Um, but some people were getting, I feel like, a little carried away with this uh, with his return. John Gant, he's been a relief pitcher for a while. Um, and then Evan Sisk, who is a minor leaguer. I wonder if the, the Cardinals were just going to cut John Gant 
uh, in exchange for adding Jay Happ. But uh, let's take a look. And I mentioned that maybe maybe the Cardinals were done with Gant because he's out of options. That means you've got to either keep him on your active roster or expose him to waivers. Uh, so maybe the Cardinals were just kind of done with this guy anyway. Um, he, you know, his ERA looks pretty solid this year, but if you look at some of the other metrics, uh, he's really been having a hard time. This guy is a right-handed relief pitcher. Again, a 3.42 ERA, that doesn't look bad. Uh, but you start to look into some more of the numbers, and he's got a matching 6.6 strikeout and walk ratio. Not really good when you have a one strikeout to walk ratio. <laughs> and his FIP is 5.11, which is real bad. His whip is you know, over 1.5. Uh, so again, I think the Cardinals were probably about ready to get rid of John Gant. And the other piece in that deal, Evan Sisk, a left-handed to former 16th round pick, uh, who is a reliever. He was with, started this year in high A, but now is up in double A. Uh, he has a, his ERA looks pretty good, 3.31, but his, he's giving up 6.34 runs per nine. But you know what? I've, this gets a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> JJ J. Happ, they traded him. That's fine with me. Some people are kind of positioning us to say that the Twins actually got some value out of this. I, I don't see it that way, uh, but uh, maybe addition by subtraction. And then their third deal of the day, Hansel Robles is traded to Boston for Alex Schreff. I'm not too surprised at this deal. Some people were surprised anybody had any interest in uh, Robles. I think his stuff has been pretty good. He's just been very, very inconsistent. It's not like he's going to be, he's been closing out some games for the Twins. It's not like he's doing that for the Red Sox. Um, he's going to be helping them, I mean, maybe in like the seventh inning, but um, I think he's just fine in, in that role in a sixth, seventh inning. I still kind of like this deal. The one thing I am surprised, though, that this was the final trade. The Twins only made three trades today. But as you see here on Baseball Reference, uh, Schreff is 23 years old and a former fifth-round pick. A pretty nice profile for him, and he's up to double A, uh, performing really well. This this is a really good trade uh, for, from uh, my perspective here. Again, he's got a 2.45 ERA in the year uh, with 46 strikeouts in 29 and third innings. That works out to a 14.1 a uh, strikeout rate per nine. His whip is 1.193, only giving up 6.8 hits per nine, and he's given up one home run in those 29 and a third innings. So uh, I think Twins did very well, very well in this trade in particular. Not like this is going to be some kind of a big impact uh, piece to the system, but at value, adding value is adding value. So uh, along with those three, three trades from today, also thought the Twins did quite well in the Nelson Cruz deal. Um, so, you know, when, when we're breaking these uh, down individually, I like these quite a bit. There's quite a bit to like about uh, how the twins went about their business here. Uh, but again, if you don't, if you feel like closing the book there, <laughs> this is your exit point. Uh, go ahead and get out of here because it uh, might get a little bit ugly. And, you know, I, if you're feeling good, I don't want to take that away from you, you know, because again, this has been, uh, it hasn't been real fun to be a twins fan this year. So I totally, totally get it. But, you know, this is not a happy day. Some people are really excited. Some people are amped up that the Twins did well, and the Twins have a minor league system that's looking stronger, uh, injecting some more pitching into the system. But this is not this is not a good day. Uh, the only reason why you're in the position to be trading Jose Brios and Nelson Cruz in the first place is because things went catastrophically wrong. <laughs> you should be the team adding pieces at this point. So, no, I am not happy. I'm not a happy Twins fan at all at this point. Um, even though I can see the logic behind uh, all these deals and felt the Twins did well, does, does my opinion in the front office change at all from this? No, it doesn't. No. How often does a team that has you know playoff aspirations end up being, no doubt about it, sellers at the trade deadline? Not very often. So when that's the case, of course you're going to have some of the best pieces to sell at the trade deadline. Um, there's a good argument to be made that Nelson Cruz was maybe the, if not one of the best bats to sell at the deadline, and that Jose Brios is maybe the, certainly one of the best arms to sell. I think on, on, on just a, a sort of this season only, I would take Max Scherzer. If you're talking about like, who do I want to start a playoff game? I'll take Max Scherzer over Jose Brios, sure. Uh, but Brios had that extra year team control. So um, even though I feel the Twins did really well in those trades uh, for those two guys, um, they should have. <laughs> they should have done well. There's a reason. It's not like they did well because this front office somehow manipulated another team's front office and found some diamonds in the rough. No, they did well because they were trading away good players. 
Uh, Nelson Cruz, again, that that's his his market was very limited. So again, I, I think the Twins were very fortunate to find a team like Tampa Bay that was you know in the American League and had a need at DH and had pitching. The exact same thing the Twins needed uh, with Jose Barrios. You can never predict a market. There is no telling how many starting pitchers were going to be available out in this market at the trade deadline. And it just so happened there was next to nobody who was really a uh, top end, you know, guy that you felt good starting a playoff game type guy. And Brios was one of those very few guys. And I think that really, the, it was more the market. <laughs> it was much more the market that dictated the good price the Twins got on these guys than it was anything that the front office did. Um, so I'm I'm still the, like that. The just because they they I feel like they did on did well in these trades doesn't wash away any of the frustration that we're here in the first place. Editing Tom here. Another point I wanted to make is like okay, we got Austin Martin. Big deal. You got about four years of him. Okay, that's the message that I'm getting here. Most guys need about a year to get up to speed, right? And then if you're going to trade them a year and a half before they hit free agency, we're not where, what are we doing here? It's just a constant cycle at that point. Sure, maybe you get a Jorge Polanco or a Max Kepler to sign a team friendly extension every once in a while. How far is that going to bring you? Jose Barrios is like the one starting pitching prospect that this team's developed. And this front office can't even get credit for it. He was already in place. So what, you know, acquiring prospects is fun, but it just feels like they're going to be the next guys being traded a year and a half before they're free agents. So just because the front office might get a passing grade for the trade deadline doesn't elevate their grades for me <laughs> right now above that mark. Um, and, and it's frustrating. Uh, you, and even though they acquired a lot of guys that are close to the majors, which I think is great, I think that was a good idea, they are giving themselves a, a chance next year. Um, you know, if you were to acquire guys way down uh, in the low minors, you know, you wouldn't even have really any kind of hope next year. It's already going to be pretty difficult. You know, it's already going to be very difficult to find hope for next year um, with the way this this organization has gone. But it, it's there. I, I still can see that that avenue of hope. But if you're a White Sox fan, put yourself in a White Sox fan shoes. Are you now all of a sudden concerned about the Twins and their minor league system that they've built and what they're coming through the pipeline? I don't think you are. I really don't. Uh, but Michael Pineda. Michael Pineda, I do not understand not trading Michael Pineda. Clearly, there were teams looking for starting pitching. If if you find a home for Jay Happ, <laughs> if you find a home for Jay Happ, there's somebody who is going to be willing to trade for Michael Pineda. Um, so I'm a little uh, a little weirded out that Michael Pineda is still here. Maybe they're going to sign him to an extension. I don't know. They could have done that before the deadline. They could do that if he hits free agency this offseason. They could sign him back again. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't see a whole lot of value in Michael Pineda looking ahead anyway, if this is going to be sort of a retooling year, whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't know that I would think you'd maybe want to be aiming for more high variance, uh, high upside, potentially low downside guys, uh, kind of taking some risks on some, some younger guys, uh, than taking a Michael Pineda. I don't, I don't know. But yeah. I saw just a lot of people really fired up about the way the twins came out of the deadline and excited. And again, I don't want to take that away from anybody who feels that way. But man, I just I can't get there. I can't I can't get on board with that uh, that mentality. Uh, uh, a lot of people were like, "Oh, how do you feel about Valerie Levine now?" Uh, just as bad, just as bad as before. Just because they had the best pieces, <laughs> and there was like no starting pitchers available, especially after the John Gray of the Rockies. The Rockies said they weren't trading John Gray. It was like, Jesus, well, <laughs> Barrios is like the, the only show in town at that point. Um, so no, no. No, I don't give them credit. You hear me? I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure, you know, I, again, again, I do think each, each of these trades was good. I, I'm not, I don't think they get like a failing grade for the trade deadline. I'm just still pissed about everything else, you know? <laughs> I'm sure as many people are happy, I'm sure there's a lot of people that feel the same way I do too. Uh, but hey, again, I'm going to be sharing highlights of the, the, uh, the two guys that they got in the big deal for Brio. So check that out. Please consider subscribing to the channel for more Twins Talk here on YouTube. Thank you so much 
for checking this out and sticking with this channel through this awful, awful season of Twins baseball. I appreciate it.